What's up YouTube? Welcome to part 6 of the Predator cosplay build. And today I'm going to be making, first of all, is going to be the neck piece for it. Which is just four pattern pieces and then some strips of foam glued to it. And after that, move on to making a belt with uh, some accessories and other things like that hanging off of it. And I wasn't sure if I was going to get a video up this week because I got pretty ill. But I'm in the clear now, and if this is your first time watching, be sure to go back and check out some of the other parts of this series and see how I've built up to this point. And if you're new, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe as it does help me out a lot. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the build. Okay, so I generally try to avoid using black foam in the videos, of course, just because it doesn't show up on camera quite so well. But since the piece itself is going to be black and it's going to be a high stress area, which is going to be the neck, I really want this to be black underneath. That way, if the paint wears off, uh, you're not going to know. Like, it's not going to be, say, green or white or something like that. So for this, if you got the pattern set off Etsy, this would be pattern L2 for this one here and pattern L1 for that one there. And when you flip it over you will have your right number one and your right number two and what you're going to do is you're going to take contact cement and put contact cement along all the edges on here on each of the edges for the pattern pieces and then you're going to glue all of those together okay so all four pieces are glued together yes it does look kind of goofy but yes that's going to get fixed as soon as i heat this and curve the appropriate areas that are supposed to be curved and with the heat as well the pattern now that it's glued together will start to pull together this was a little tr uh, tricky to glue together what i ended up doing was gluing together r1 and r2 this side first and then i went over and did the opposite side with L1 and L2 and then I just glued the two pieces together. That I found was much easier, especially since the joint between L1 and uh, L2 is so extreme, I just figured it would be easier to glue that first and then just put the two halves together. Next I'm going to grab my heat gun and start shaping this. Okay, so I've been using my heat gun to heat this up here. And it is just a standard drill master heat gun dual setting, uh, low on the top, high on the bottom. And I just turn it on and heat up the foam. And as you can see here, I have heated one side but not the other. That way you can just see the contrast. And this side isn't even fully finished, but this will give you an idea. This is what I was saying about, you know, rounding out this side. And once you round out this side properly, it starts to go into place quite nice. You can see I've also heated and flattened this down a little bit to follow the actual slope of my chest. And then in the back, it just curves around flat to follow the line of the, of, of the back of your neck and your back. And this side, as you can see, I've done nothing to and it still looks pretty bad. So the heating is crucial for these patterns to work out correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and heat and shape the other side of it. I'm going to have the neck piece and its curvature. And next, I've taken some strips of three millimeter craft foam. This pretty easy to find, at least in the US, readily available, completely inexpensive uh, foam. This is the five millimeter, which is what I use for here. And this is the three millimeter craft foam. You can honestly find anything probably online is gonna be denser and better quality than this, but whatever, it works for what I need it for. And I'm gonna glue this on with super glue. I'm actually not going to use uh, contact cement. Just not much point in it. And I'm going to find the center point of these. I'm going to start gluing them in the middle and wrapping them around and spacing them out by about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so I got all of the quarter inch strips glued on with super glue. I'm going to let this dry the rest of the way. Now you'll notice here in the back, there's not actually any strips. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One, whenever I put this inside my armor, most of this on the side and the back here is covered by the armor itself. The other thing is all the dread-like tentacles coming off of the Yautja uh, back of the head for the actual mask that I have are not only going to cover this for the most part, but I feel like they also just kind of get caught up on these. And I like the way it looks like that. So if you wish, you can extend it all the way around, but since it's going to be covered for the most part, I'm not even going to bother with it. 
And to seal this, I'm going to use some black Plasti Dip. Okay, so I've given my Plasti Dip plenty of time to dry and I'm pretty happy with the results. So I removed the painter's tape which I used to hold this together the way I wanted it while I Plasti Dipped it. And this also served a secondary and actually more important function which is to keep the Plasti Dip off of the foam on both sides where the tape was because I am going to be gluing in some velcro. This velcro here I took a piece of two millimeter foam and this velcro is industrial strength and has adhesive on the back and I stuck it to the foam and then just trimmed the foam around it. This will be glued on the inside here. I'll have to put super glue and stick this to it. I think that the super glue will quite frankly work better and much quicker than trying to gob a bunch of contact cement on it. And the other side of the industrial strength velcro I've already cut to length and trimmed to the width that I'd like is going to go like this on the inside. And I'm going to glue that on using some contact cement. Okay, so here is the finished neck piece with the velcro fully installed. And I've sat it inside of the armor here. So you can get a look at that. See how it looks. Like I say, most of this is going to be hidden either by this or by the dreads that are coming down so you're not really going to see it for the most part anyways but yeah that's why i didn't worry too much about having those plus like i said i didn't want the dreads to get caught or tangled up on these little ribs and just chew it all up so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to start working on the belt with the loincloth okay so now that the neck piece is done what i'm going to do next is start to make the belt and for the belt, I just took some 5mm EVA foam. I cut it about 2 inches wide. And I glued the two pieces together in the middle. So I have a piece that is uh, 34 inches long from one end to the other. And next, I'm going to take a strip of half inch EVA foam mat. It doesn't really matter how thick you cut this. I just use those little edge pieces that I end up just tearing off and they just sit there. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to contact cement this to the top edge of the belt going from one end to the other. I still need to cut another section to fill in here, but yeah, I'm going to contact cement all that in. Okay, so I have glued my strip here to this, and when I glued it, I just kind of curved it a little as I applied the piece to it, just to help me out a little bit. And I'm not going to glue this to the actual front of the piece. This ledge is here to glue to the bottom. Let me show you. This is the abdominal piece right side up, correct? I'm going to flip this upside down so that my abdominal piece here is exposed. And where this is actually going to glue is I'm going to put contact cement on this edge and along this edge. And then whenever I'm done, I'm going to line this up at the center and start from the center and then contact cement this around to the back. Okay, so here it is attached to the bottom of the abdominal piece here. You can see top, bottom, like I say I just attached it around the edge. And if there's gaps and stuff, don't worry about that. You want it to make it look like it's at least overlapping the predator, if that makes sense, so that, you know, it looks like a, a belt. I mean, duh, but whatever. Okay, so, and in those gaps and places like that, I'm gonna go ahead, and I've already started to do it, which is just take some hot glue, and start filling in those gaps and stuff with the hot glue. That way you just got a little bit of extra stability there. You definitely don't want this coming apart. And contact cement's pretty good, but since this is literally just the beginning of the belt and there's going to be leather and all kinds of other stuff, you know, just kind of glued onto this, I wanted to make sure that uh, it's not going to come apart. So I trust the contact cement, but this hot glue is a backup. Like I say, it also helps to fill in some of those seams and some of those gaps as well. Because as you'll obviously notice in particular on the sides here, there's a lot of shape that I heated into these muscles. So in order 
flip this around, you can see here there's going to be some gaps. So like I say, I'm just filling that in to make sure it's nice and solid and secure all the way around. Up in the front here too, there are some gaps as well because once again I curved the foam so extreme, I just filled those in with the hot glue. Okay, so now that I have my belt strip or belt anchor essentially, because this isn't an actual belt, it's just foam, obviously, first of all. And second of all, this isn't going to be like a true belt, more like a one cloth cod piece belt, but whatever. So, for the different pieces, they'll be labeled cod piece 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, and 5. You need one piece from 2 and 1. One of each, and then you're going to need two threes, two fours, and two fives. And you're going to glue these much like I have them laid overlapping. Two overlapping onto one. I'm going to glue that first, and then glue on three to either side underneath. Once again, overlapping, and then four with five on top. I'll glue all this together, come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, here I have glued two off to one. As I said, just slightly offset by about a millimeter or two. And then same thing, I just overlapped uh, the two number three pieces on either side with the one and the two on top. Next, I will overlap these over number four on either side with the five kind of locking in up top. Okay, so I have one, two, two threes, and my two fours together. I didn't put the fives on yet because first I wanted to heat the back here and curve these a little bit. So that whenever I do eventually glue it on, it lines up with the front of this a lot better. And you'll see this piece here, there's no pattern for this. I just cut out a wedge of foam just to kind of reinforce it. You shouldn't even see it once it's plastic dipped and glued on there. And I paint everything metallic and all that good stuff. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heat gun here and put this on low. And this tends to get hot rather quick. Okay, and this thing on low has just about as much heat as a hair dryer on high, basically. But I'm not trying to shape it. I just want to seal the outside of the foam. Uh, because... After I put a little hot glue in along this seam here, just to reinforce it a little, we're going to move on to plastic dipping this and painting. Okay, so I have my two number five pieces on here, and just to quick show you the back, that's where I put the hot glue along these various seams, just to give it a little reinforcing. And you also notice, yeah, some weathering cuts, slashes, etc., etc. Whether or not you want to do that with yours is, of course, up to you. Next, I have some plastic dip. And I'm just going to start spraying this down. Okay, so now that this has had plenty of time to sit and dry, and all of the plastic dip has been fully cured for 24 hours, I have loaded up my airbrush here with some Createx black that I thinned out with some water and added some Mod Podge to as well. I usually run it at a pretty runny consistency. It's almost as thin as water, if that gives you any idea. And I know it's black, but I'm going to go ahead and airbrush this black anyways because the Mod Podge will give it a nice uh, shiny glossy base essentially for uh, painting over with some silver and gold overspray, which I think is going to look this, make this look pretty cool all around. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and paint this whole entire thing, uh, that nice gloss black. That's part of the reason why I mixed, you know, the gloss Mod Podge with the black paint. So I have a nice shiny black finish to put some metallic over. And once I get this done, we'll come back and check out the overspray technique. Alright, now that my black is dried and it is nice and shiny, I'm going to start with some overspray. 
And the first thing I'm going to overspray onto it is from Createx Colors. It is their Wicked Colors line, and it is Wicked Gold. Not a huge fan of this, but as just a light overspray, for example, it's not so bad. Okay, so I'm not going to put any gold on the center or the side pieces. But I'm going to put a light overspray, as you can see there. Like, you can still see a lot of the black through on both sides here. And I'm also going to do a little bit, just color that triangular piece in there, the number five. And same over here as well. Just going to go ahead and lightly fill that in. I think I'm going to put a little bit more gold on each triangle piece so they will stand out a little bit more from the two side pieces here and here, the number three pieces. Okay, now that my gold has had some time to dry, I now have my airbrush loaded up with some Wicked Silver from the same company. This as well, I thin out quite considerably much like the black or the gold. And I'm just going to do a general overspray on this, pretty much over the whole piece. I'm going to avoid these two triangular number five pieces up here, but otherwise, I am going to give it a nice coat. Okay, quickly overview the whole piece. When applying the silver, I put it pretty much a general amount, pretty similar all over, as far as the dusting went. Like I said, I didn't put much up here or over here. Now, I did put a little more on the edges here and on the tips, and on the tips here as well, and a little bit more through the center. It's gonna make it a little shinier there, and that would be an area where you would obviously have some wear. I am, of course, going to go through and hand, de uh, hand detail paint uh, in a couple of these scratches. Some I will leave dark and black, and some I will actually, you know, paint in. But that way, when the light hits it, it has more of a realistic metallic look. A lot of times, I don't know if you noticed or not, when you paint something with a metallic spray paint or just a solid metallic uh, paint without either dry brushing or airbrushing it, it kind of tends to look a little cheesy and a little fake. So this is what I do to make it look like metal. All right, now that this is done, I've gone ahead and used a Sharpie to put a couple marks here because when I line this up to glue this on, I want to stop about there with all the leather I'm going to glue on it. And I went to Hobby Lobby and just purchased a bag of scrap leather. I want to say it was $4.99 or $5.99, but it just has some random pieces. And I'm not sure if this is going to be enough. I actually might have to go back and get more. But underneath this, once this is glued on, there's going to be a piece of leather, kind of like the loincloth coming down. There's also going to be some pieces on the side as well. So I want to glue those leather pieces on around the side here first, prior to me actually gluing this on, because this is going to go over top of all that. Okay, so I have attached my first piece of leather here, which is just a triangle that I cut relatively straight at the top so it could line up along with the foam. And I used contact cement to put this on. I put it on pretty heavy, and I let it sit for a little bit longer before sticking this on. And over here I have the piece for the other side, which I have not put on yet, because I wanted you guys to see round about the rough shape that I cut straight across the top but kind of jagged and rough and ragged along the sides and I'm going to go ahead and put this on the other side over here All right, I've been gluing on some smaller triangles here one I already attached kind of offset here in the front 
and I have a second one here that the contact cement needs to sit for a little bit longer. It's going to pretty much go in the same spot. And I also have another piece that is going to be attached to this prior to me gluing it all on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these together, come back and have you check that out. Okay, so I wanted some type of utility pouch, but I didn't want to have to make anything. And I wanted to scavenge something, and I wanted a square one and a round one. I haven't found anything for the round one yet. I might make that, but might not. The square one, however, is just some weird packet that I, that I found. Uh, I can't remember, honestly, where I got this. A lot of people donate things to me that I know, because they know that I make all this weird stuff out of it. And... Uh, I sanded it down with some 150 grit sandpaper. That's why you can see the lines here. I'm hoping that's going to make it look more metallic. But before I do any painting or effects to it, I'm going to primer it first. I'm going to use some of this uh, vinyl and fabric specialty coating. This stuff works really good on uh, plastic. It doesn't so much paint. It doesn't. It's not a layer of paint that sits on top of it, such as uh, spray paint does, for example. It actually soaks into it. It is a literal dye, and it works great on any sort of mold injected plastics like this. And this color that I'm using right here is charcoal gray. Now, I picked this stuff up at auto parts stores. I've never seen it at Lowe's or Home Depot, and I have looked. Now, I don't need to primer both sides of this, just the sides that are going to be exposed. The side that's on the bottom is going to be glued to the piece itself, so I really want to leave that uh, untouched with no paint so that I won't have a problem with it peeling off due to the paint being on it and trying to glue a painted uh, surface to another surface. Okay, so while I'm waiting on that uh, primer to dry, let's hop back here and take a look at how everything looks now that I have the of all the different leather pieces glued on, including down here, and have this piece glued on. See, I have it glued up about a quarter inch higher than the actual line of everything else. And there's another thing to note here, which is that I put these furniture nails, they're called these. They're black and kind of look like a tack. And what I did was first I poked a hole through it because it's two layers of leather. I put some super glue onto the tip of it and then just went ahead and put it in place. And the square utility pack that I'm making, I'm going to put over here. You can, of course, decorate and do yours however you want. All this stuff is just an example. I'm um, just hoping to spur on your creativity and give you some ideas in your own cosplay, of course. But I'm going to mount mine over here. And I would like to have a round one to place over in here. Uh, just simply because not every single photo, but a lot of photos of different types of predators have the square and the round uh, utility pouch. And I think something metallic would help break up all of this black and brown leather as well, much like this did here. All right, now that my primer has had plenty of time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and use some Createx opaque black that I mixed with some Mod Podge to make it glossy, just like I did with the actual cod piece. Now that my black has had time to fully dry, you can see it's nice and shiny. And just like before, I am using the Wicked Silver from Createx Colors. Whoa, I just lost the top to my airbrush. That's not good. Oh well.
Okay, so this has fully dried, of course. All the paint I spilled when the cap popped off the airbrush did not, but this is fully dried. And I just oversprayed it, however, a little bit uh, thicker than what I did on the uh, cod piece itself. And you'll probably notice that I put it a lot thicker around the edges and the corners and in through the center here and along the edges on both sides. I did that because that is where it would have more wear and would be more shiny in the center where it doesn't get as much, you know, use or abuse is going to be darker. And next I'm going to clear coat this with some acrylic clear coat and then I'll go ahead and glue it on. Okay, so I took some sandpaper here. This is 150 grit and I roughed up this area here because I am going to use super glue to attach my pouch and this pouch has been clear coated and you can see the clear coat really makes the metallic look on it pop it looks almost like it is metal which was of course duh the idea but I'm gonna go ahead and use some super glue and I'm gonna glue this one on right cha. Okay the utility pouch has been attached uh, I did actually find the reference photo which was from the Celtic Predator from AVP and these are actually on the back you had kind of a slightly rounded hexagonal one here and a round one there. Neither here nor there. I liked the way this looked. I did it. It's there. Now, on to the rear here. Uh, this is a little wider than what it actually needs to be. But, next thing I'm going to do is the rear loincloth. Which is not only going to cover this, but it's also going to hold down the rear piece of the armor. It's going to go over top of it. And I am just making that out of more random scraps of leather. I went back to Hobby Lobby and picked up another scrap bag. And I liked these three colors. This dark brown, almost to the point of being black. The lighter brown, and then the, just the straight, somewhat shiny black. And these are going to be contact cemented together. I have not done that yet. Because I wanted to show you them separately so you can see. And I simply cut this as wide as I needed it to be. And depending upon your size, uh, depends on what you're going to need as well. And this is a 2 inch wide strip of EVA foam that I already glued using contact cement to the back of this. I'm going to go ahead and glue these three together. Okay, I have glued all of the pieces together. And I also added on a couple of scrap pieces here. And I also put on my Velcro, I have the soft side here, and I also put on the sticky side there, and this will just end up Velcroing like that, and will then be the rear uh, cloth. And this, like I said, is going to be the space where that piece of the armor is going to go behind and going to push it flat. I may actually need to trim some of it off, but possibly not. I have to, of course, do a test fitting and figure all that out. But the next thing I'm going to do is add some pieces of flare, so to speak. Of course, I have this here. Next, I want to put a skull on it. And I got this skull, and it's super cheesy, and it was a dollar, literally one dollar at the Dollar Tree. But I looked at it and thought to myself, you know, I could probably do something else with this to make it better. Of course, paint it, but, you know, some other things as well. And those other things are removing the jaw for one thing. Once you remove the jaw, this immediately looks a lot more realistic. So I just cut that off using some scissors. As you can see, this is totally thin plastic. And I used a heat gun just to push this in a little bit right here around this edge. It just didn't look good. And then I cut a hole in the top with some scissors, poked them through, and I took an extra piece of my leather, put a couple knots in the end of it that, as you can see those dark areas, is actually super glue to make sure this doesn't come undone. And then, of course, all I have to do is pull the leather through it, and now I have a means and a way to hang this. And part of the reason, initially I was going to permanently attach it to it, but then I realized this is really kind of a crappy skull. I'd like to get a better one, but I don't want to go out and spend 20 or 30 or 40 dollars on a realistic skull for a cosplay that, I mean, costs more than 30 dollars, but each piece didn't cost much more than that. And since this is just part of one particular piece here, I just don't want to spend too much money 
But I am going to attach this on here somewhere. I want to make a mount or something so I can just kind of tie this to it. And then if I want to replace it later, I can just take that off and chuck it aside and go ahead and get a new one. Okay, I took a one inch strip of the scrap leather that I had and folded it over and glued it together with a D-ring on it and then push this in with the furniture nails or carpet tacks or whatever you want to call them and was able to tie on my skull with a knot that if I need to I can take out and just for a quick side-by-side -side comparison you can see with the black wash and some of the painting I did and the black wash is just a very thinned out black acrylic I apply that and then take a towel and wipe off which leaves the brighter areas and leaves the other areas dark and with the jaw removed and some painting tricks it looks a lot better than its original version and so far I'm digging the way that this looks I have cut out my rear plate number one and number two pieces and I'm gonna glue these together with the top one slightly offset just like that and I'm gonna glue them with a curve in them because once I paint them and plastic them and do all the same stuff I did to the front it's gonna be glued right onto the back in the center. Right now it's glued together. I'm going to start to plaster up this just like the other pattern pieces for the cod piece. Okay, once the plastic dip dried, I went ahead and did the same process as before, where I did the overspray with the gold and the silver over all that, and then sealed that off with some uh, acrylic sealer, acrylic gloss clear coat sealer, and I went ahead and put some contact cement on it, and I am next going to glue it here, and of course probably add in a couple of the furniture nails here. I only have three left, so pretty sure I'm gonna use at least two for this, maybe even a third one, I'm not sure. But, neither here nor there. Okay, the plate has been put on here, and I also took and put some more of the furniture nails in. And if you notice, the weathering and, and wear and tear on here, that's actually not, if I can get it focused in here, that is actually not uh, paint to do that. I actually literally ran, went around with a file on all of the rivets and just kind of scraped off some of the paint so that they would all have a weathered, torn up look. And another thing, too, I've been periodically doing, you may notice a little in here, is I'm taking some sandpaper and just roughing up the leather in certain spots to make it look old and worn out. I can, or you can, or whatever, go through later with some acrylic wash and a brush, or you could take an airbrush and take some thinned out black and just lightly spritz some in and around to give sort of some dirty look to it. Of course, as I sand this off, you can see it gives it kind of a lighter look, so it'll give a nice contrast of wear and dirt and grime and grit. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna to make to put on the belt is the Smart Disc. And this is pattern piece number one. And I traced and drew out one of them, and then I flipped it over and traced out a second one opposite. And I did that so that I can flip them over like this, put them together, and I have one half and then two number twos, flip them over, and now I have the other half. Okay, and then of course the predator's hand would go in like that to grab it. Okay, and one thing of note here, I did cut these out with an X-Acto knife, is that these edges I cut on a bias, which just means that I cut it on an angle. There's a beveled edge on it. Uh, not quite 45 degrees. It's not necessary, especially if you're going to sand and dremel, which I am going to use a dremel on this after I glue all the pieces together, of course. But 
I just figured that it would help in general to make it a little easier to already have an angle started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is glue both sides together like I've done here. But before I glue these two together, I have the disc center piece that is cut out of 3 millimeter EVA foam. And I did heat the edges of it and press it down so it is thinner. You don't necessarily have to do that. You don't even necessarily have to include this, but it will give it a slightly different shape and a little bit more dimension for one thing. But the second thing that it will do is give it a little bit more strength so this isn't so flimsy. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this in the center before I glue these two together like that. I have both sides glued together. I looked at a reference photo online and using an X-Acto knife, I cut some designs into this. And I've just been heating it with a heat gun to help open all that up and seal the foam a little bit as well. Now that that's all opened up, I'm going to work on the opposite side. And for the opposite side, what I did was I took a Pringles lid and then the circular pattern piece labeled bottom circle. And I cut that out and glue it on. I cut out a scrap, uh, a piece of scrap foam that's 5mm for the bottom. But you could just use two uh, bottom circles. I was just too lazy and too much of a hurry to cut out two nice looking circles. And I took my X-Acto knife and cut two lines through it. And just like with this, I use the heat gun to cause that to open up. And then you're going to take the bottom S piece, and I've cut that out. And I'm going to glue this on so that it's lined up like a plus, this center line here, with the two lines that I cut into it. Now that my center pattern pieces, uh, the, the circle and the S, are glued together, I also put a googly eye on it because I didn't have any more... Uh, furniture nails or thumbtacks and I needed some sort of rivet in the center and since this is a type of plastic that doesn't take paint very well much like the googly eye I'm gonna primer it real quick with some vinyl and fabric specialty coating it's not so much a, a paint like like spray paint which lays on the surface it gets absorbed into the actual plastic so I'm gonna use that as a primer it will then take any sort of paint, spray paint, airbrush, anything much, much better. And don't worry about the foam. Like I say, it's not a paint. It's necessarily going to just lay on top, per se, as it is uh, just going to get absorbed into the foam rubber. You can still plastic it over it, spray paint over it, whatever you want to do to finish it. But... Like I say, since this type of plastic doesn't like spray paint, I end up taking it off with my thumbnail or finger or something almost every single time. Once I discovered this stuff, uh, it gave a good primer and base to work with. I started using this pretty much for anything. And like I say, so it's just a primer. It doesn't matter what color you use. Right, I have the piece glued onto the bottom here. And now I'm going to take my Dremel and sand out and smooth out and even out all these edges, including the ones in here as well. If you don't have a Dremel, you can always hand sand these. Uh, I think it's usually easiest to use a sanding sponge or sanding block and then finish it off with some 320 grit or preferably 600 grit to help smooth it out. But... I have a Dremel rotary tool. I usually set mine around 1520. And I'm going to use that to make this look a little bit better. Here is the result of my sanding. I gave it a much deeper, sharper edge. And helped just clean it up all around so it looks a lot nicer. And I want to point out here, if you're going to make this as an actual prop, like, for my uses, this is made out of 5mm EVA foam. Because I want it to be light, it's going to be hanging on part of the costume. This, to me, is not a separate functional prop in that sense. If you want something you're going to carry around, that you're going to use a lot, definitely replace the 5mm foam with EVA foam mats. That would be my suggestion. Uh, it would look a lot better if you did that, and it would...
be a lot more durable as well versus this. This is simply just going to be hanging on the costume, and much like the skull is going to be made so that if I want, I can take this off later and replace it with something whenever I have more time to dedicate to making, you know, a more accurate looking prop. Just like the armor pieces and the utility pouch, I plastered up this, followed by a gloss black, and now I'm going to dust it with some silver chrome, same as before. Silver overspray, most concentrated towards the edges, and in here kind of medium and not much in here. And then I oversprayed the whole thing with gold and focused a little more just on the area right in here. And now I'm going to go ahead and clear coat this so it has a nice shiny gloss finish and also helps to protect it. I also feel like it kind of really does make the airbrushing pop and any effects pop sometimes of course you want to matte but for a weapon of this caliber and being that it's some sort of metal alloy i want it to be shiny while i'm waiting on my smart disc to dry i cut out a, another strip of the leather and this one i cut seven inches long by one inch wide and put Velcro on it with some contact cement. And this is what I'm going to loop through the thumb hole of the smart disc, which will then be attached onto the side here, just like that. And if I don't want to use the smart disc or I want to end up adding a couple other things beside this and hang in another skull or some other trophy type item off of it, a spine, I don't know, I can take the smart disc off or even an upgraded you know, more nicely built uh, smart disc. Okay, the clear coat has had time to dry and I've gone ahead and put on the strap as well. So that I think is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. However, I guess it wouldn't be complete if I didn't go ahead and try it on with the neck piece and all the other stuff that I have so that y'all can get the full effect. Okay, so, uh, just checking out that footage, I'm pretty happy with everything. One thing I'm gonna change is back in here, where this Velcro's on, of course this whole entire seam in back here is covered by this piece here, and this bottom piece has to fit behind here. And if you'll watch in that last clip, when I first walk out and show you the back of it, it's in there. But once I turn around and move a little bit, it pops out. So I'm going to have to either attach a piece of elastic with some Velcro that I can Velcro down into here so it will stay in place. And maybe also just extend this a little bit more on the back side. Make it a little more sturdy and... Give me a little extra piece to just kind of slip down into here, behind here, to help hold it all into place. That way when I'm moving around at a convention or whatever, it just doesn't go all haywire. Well, that wraps it up for this week's video. Uh, may not have a video next week, just due to some uh, prior commitments I have to deal with, but please bear with me on that. Uh, we'll be back the following week with more Predator cosplay, and I'm gonna also going to try to squeeze in some other things to vary it up. Instead of just doing this over and over and over again, but I have to have it done in a few weeks, so there's not going to be too many more of these videos, and the cosplay will be finished, and then we'll have a final reveal. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. 
Uh, this video came out a little longer than I hoped, but eh, it is what it is. And as always, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And everyone, have a great day.